Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so the Black Bull Tech Corps is still being attacked in this chapter, and we kind of get a little hints as to what Sally and Dom's actual mission is. Now, they say their mission is to gather something from the surrounding area, and they're kind of just taking a sidetrack from their mission to attack the Black Bull's headquarters, I guess for fun. But at the same time, the way they act throughout this chapter, combined with how they attacked the base last chapter, it kind of seems like they're putting a lot of focus on attacking the base. So much so that if it really is for fun, it doesn't seem like they put their mission, in, their actual mission in jeopardy. Like the fact that they would put so much focus on attacking the base if this wasn't their actual mission. So maybe whatever they're, whatever they're after, maybe that actually is hidden inside the Black Wolf's headquarters and they're just trying to destroy it so they can get to it. But at the same time, if that's the case, these characters in general don't seem like they would try to put the Black Wolves off their trail by saying, oh, hey, we're actually on a separate mission, but we're kind of just attacking you for fun. It seems like they'd be upfront about it. So, yeah, it was, kind of, it was a little weird. It kind of has me wondering exactly what's going on. So I'm just going to have to wait to see what happens with that. Now, obviously, when they say they're here to attack the base, Chaos doesn't hesitate. He just attacks them straight up. Obviously, it doesn't really do anything to Sally Slime Lizard to kind of just go right through it. And this is when things get a little interesting when it comes to Gouch, and this is actually the only time his character is actually relevant throughout the entire chapter. And that is when Sally says that she was getting specific orders not to kill him. And that has me wondering, is Gouch somehow connected to Midnight Sun's Eye? Because we don't really know that much about him. We know that he has an obsession with his sister. We know that he was actually in jail because he committed some crimes trying to provide for her and protect her. But as far as we know, we don't really know anything about his heritage. Uh, we know they're orphans. But as far as I can remember, we don't know if their parents were killed or they were just abandoned. We don't know if they have any relatives outside their, fam outside their parents. So really, we don't really know that much about him. It could be that he actually does have some kind of connection to Midnight Sun's Eye. Like maybe his uncle or maybe actually his dad, if he was abandoned, actually is a member of the Midnight Sun's Eye and they were given orders not to kill him because of that connection. We don't know. We'll have to wait to see what happens with that in the, later on in the series. Now, like I said, Gouch's attack does nothing, and to retaliate, Sally sends this fucking zombie straight after him. And this is when Gordon fucking jumps in, and oh man, I was hype all week. I was hype all week because we have never seen Gordon, we never seen Gray actually get in a fight. So I was excited to see exactly what they can do, and the second Gordon jumped in, I was like, dude, that is epic. The guy comes out, and he's like, hey, you're dead already, so I don't have to hold back. And he summons fucking three poison badgers to attack the zombie. Now, we already knew that Gorn's magic was hex magic, so when they, when they said that, I thought, alright, he has something to do with those dolls. Like, those dolls that we see that he likes to make, figured he'd probably grab some, his enemy's hair, put it on one of the dolls, start stabbing them left and right, because that's what you think when you come to hex magic. When you think of hexes, you think, alright, killing dolls, curses, stuff like that. But no, he instead he uses poison animals to attack. And the second I saw that, I was like, dude, your character is clearly based off of Shino from Naruto. Like, you had the same kind of characteristics, you're the shy, timid, or not timid, but you're the shy, quiet type, who uses poison animals to attack people. You're clearly based off of Shino. Now, as soon as I connected the dots between the two characters, I was like, dude, alright. Shino obviously doesn't get much development in the series of Naruto, so I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that the author of this series actually takes the time to actually develop Gordon and actually give him some good fights, unlike Shino had in, in throughout the entire Naruto series. We didn't really get much of Shino when it came to like good fights we had like what one due to tuning exam I'd have, I don't remember anything else besides that so hopefully this offer learns from that and actually gives Gordon some good fights and we actually get to see more of his abilities but yeah that's what Gordon does now Gray oh man dude Gray I had so many ideas when it came to her transformation magic it like I had so many ideas and she just took everything I had and threw it out the window and gave me something even better instead all right, so my original idea for Gray was that, all right, maybe her ability, because her when she transforms into other people, she can actually use her magic ability. So I was like, all right, dude, she just transforms into the army right now. She just uses dark magic, sword thing, and she just takes care of all three of them. All, like, no problem whatsoever. Right now, just, take, just takes out all three of them. But no, no. Instead, her magic ability, or at least the magic she uses in this chapter, is that she can actually change the magic properties of someone's attack. So like, all right, Sally comes at Gordon and um, she's, she's using her slime thing. They can't do anything against it. So Gray jumps in and is like, hey, I got this. She goes in and changes the slime wizard thing into crystal. So Gordon's able to easily destroy it. And I'm like, dude, if you can do that to basically anybody's attack, then you basically just became the most important support character in the series. Because think about it. Say uh, say Magna, for example. Say Magna's going up against someone who uses water abilities. Obviously, he'd be at a disadvantage with his fire techniques. So instead, she just jumps in and is like, hey, now you're, all your attacks are plants. 
I mean, obviously, if Magnus is up against someone who's actually captain level, someone who actually completely outclasses him, he wants that chance still, regardless of whether or not he has the advantage when it comes to his attribute. But still, the fact that she can change people's magic attack attributes is actually really handy. It actually really is important support magic, and I actually can't wait to see her team up with someone and actually use that as a support of a character. Now, even though the three of them put up a pretty good fight, they actually do end up losing once the Midnight Suns member actually summons up this, like, this zombie is actually kind of like two dead uh, Magic Knight captains combined into one. It completely overpowers them, which obviously makes sense because I doubt any of them could actually take on one captain alone, let alone two captains put into one body, attacking them with both magics all like full force. They really didn't stand a chance. And now this is actually when we actually get a little bit more backstory behind Gray and Gordon. It's not anything we didn't already figure out between the two of them, you know, Gray and Gordon, like, Gray's shyness about her true appearance made it so that she had a hard time getting friends. Gordon's hex magic made it hard for him to get friends on. But the two basically say that, hey, after they end up doing the Black Bulls, they made friends with people and they want to protect that friendship by protecting the base. So they're like, we can't just give up this fight now. They actually inspired Gao who actually pretty much gave up at this point to get back up and continue fighting. And that's when we actually get a surprise. And this is something that I did not see coming. They, the three of them get back up and they're ready to fight. They're like, all right, you know, we got to keep going. And then the base starts opening up, and out comes this guy, and he's like, hey, what the hell is going on? What the fuck is up with all this noise? And that's where the chapter ends. And I'm like, dude, who the fuck is this? Because literally, the guy opens up the base, and he's like, hey, what the fuck's going on? Now, we don't get to see who the character is, but the fact that he was able to open up the base makes me think, all right, we already know that the base switches around every day because of magic. What if this guy actually is the one controlling the base and the fact that it's switching around every day? If that's the case, then this guy right here, he might be a Pika. Now, if you don't know who Pika is, go back and read the Dress Rosa, the Dress Rosa arc of One Piece. Pika is basically this guy who can control the ground, control like buildings and shit, and he basically uses it to create a giant monster form of himself in order to attack Zoro. My thinking is, what if this guy can? If this guy can control the base, what if he does exactly that? What if he actually turns the base into his like own armor or whatnot, transforms it into like some kind of mecha suit, and just unleashes on these motherfuckers if he does that i am going to be hype as shit i'm actually really interested to see what actually happens with this guy because i seriously if he actually ends up doing what i think he's going to do which is turn the base into like a giant mecha form or whatever i am hype but yeah that's pretty much all that happens in the chapter now i'm glad that we actually spent pretty much the entire chapter focusing on this because really there's no point to go back to asking um we don't really need to see what's going on with that they already be liar you know like his storyline is the only thing that's actually important on that side of the fence and really, we can wait till the end of the arc to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's pretty much all happens in the chapter. I'm interested to see what uh, Gouch's connection to Midnight Sun's eye is. I'm interested to see what this new guy's going to do. I'm interested, I'm interested to see what Gray and Gordon are going to do now as they continue to fight. And, yeah, I'm just interested to see this fight go down. But that's it for the review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Give me a like and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I put a lot of effort into making this video. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.